In order to truly appreciate silver, one must put silver in perspective. There are 3.4 billion acres of available farmland in the world, and only a billion ounces of silver. That is less than one quarter of an ounce of silver for every arable acre of land. There is roughly about 6.8 billion people in the world, and about 1 billion ounces of above ground silver. That works out to about a tenth of an ounce of silver per person if every ounce was evenly distributed per capita. But we know that silver is not evenly distributed. Think about this, your local millionaire could easily buy a ton of silver. Based off of that, only 31,250 people in the world could ever own exactly one ton of silver. And yet there are 10 million millionaires in the world. This is not even your ultra rich. This is your millionaire next door kind of guy. Another way of putting silver into perspective is by its market capitalization. If there are about a billion ounces of silver and bullion in existence right now, and silver is about $30 an ounce, then the market cap of silver is about $30 billion. So let's see how silver's market cap relates to the values of other assets. One single gold miner, Goldcorp, has a market cap of about $30 billion. Bill Gates is worth about $53 billion. The total market cap of all gold miners is $250 billion. The market cap of silver would only be 1 20th of the market cap of Apple Computer, which stands at about $600 billion. The total amount of actual dollars in circulation in the world is $800 billion. The total amount of all other currencies in circulation is about $2 trillion. The estimated market cap of all the gold in the world is about $6 trillion. The total market cap of all private businesses is about $10 trillion. The total GDP of America is $15 trillion. The total market cap of all American stocks is about $15 trillion. The total amount of U.S. Treasuries in the world is about $15 trillion. The total amount of sovereign world debt is about $15 trillion. The total amount of corporate and muni debt is about $25 trillion. The total value of all commercial property is about $30 trillion. The total estimated market cap of the rest of the world's stock markets is about $50 trillion. The world GDP is $55 trillion. The estimated value of residential real estate is about $80 trillion. The estimated unfunded government liabilities is about $250 trillion. The estimated value of reported derivatives is $700 trillion. And finally, there's an estimated $800 trillion in shadow derivatives. The examples that I mentioned take into account all of the silver bullion on the Earth's surface right now. If we narrowed it down to just the silver that's in the COMEX warehouses of about 100 million ounces, all of those ratios would explode by a factor of 10. The United States alone spends more money on interest on the national debt every day than the entire warehouse of available silver. Let's take this further and really drive it home. Inside the COMEX warehouses, there are two classifications of silver registered and eligible. The register classification means that the silver is available on demand for delivery to investors. Eligible silver can become registered and deliverable if the owner of silver wants to sell it. This has a hook. It cannot be encumbered by obligations like loans taken out against the bullion or if it has been leased out. Whether you know it or not, if you are storing your silver at the COMEX, chances are that they can loan out your silver with the promise to pay it back. This is why it's so important to hold your silver physically. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Currently, there are only 30 million ounces of silver in the COMEX registered and deliverable category. That is less than a billion dollars worth of silver. The world could sneeze and come up with that kind of money. And as we've seen, the elite protect this little hoard with a myriad of tricks. The COMEX has a known policy that you can sell unlimited amounts of silver, including paper silver that doesn't exist but you can only take a limited amount of silver off the table and only on certain times. They play games with margin requirements to shake out the leveraged hands and if things get out of control they can force you to settle for the dollar value of your contract. There have even been rumors that in the past that they have paid premiums on a contract to dissuade physical delivery. The thing that put silver in the most perspective for me was an article written by Adrian Douglas from GATA that claimed the United States Geological Survey said that silver would be extinct by 2020. When I first read this, I said to myself, with all the stuff that I know about silver, this would be the most incredible exclamation point on why you should sell every single asset you have and buy silver now. 
Adrian did not cite his source in the article, but I knew Adrian would not put his reputation on the line for a crazy claim like that, so I decided to send an email to the United States Geological Survey myself. Here's what I wrote. Adrian Douglas wrote a report claiming that the United States Geological Survey said that silver was going to be the first element to become extinct as soon as 2020. Was this written by the USGS and where is it? I got an email back from the USGS that said this. I don't believe that the USGS would ever use the term quote-unquote extinct in regards to the depletion of a resource. The USGS estimates the current worldwide silver reserves to be estimated at 510,000 tons. The global demand for silver in 2009 was about 24,000 tons. If nothing else were to change, the implication would be that we would run out of silver in 20 years. However, new deposits are still being discovered and scarcity would lead to a higher valuation, which would eventually lead to more exploration interest. Here's a diagram showing silver's relative abundance. He finishes up with this line that said, While silver ore may become scarce, given the right price, it shouldn't become extinct. Regards, Gary Dorsher of the United States Geological Survey, Office of Communication and Publication, Science Information Services, Alaska. That last line is what it's all about. The bankers manipulated the price of silver down and it gave rise to a quadrillion dollar Ponzi scheme to give them unlimited power and profits. This manipulation has caused an incredible malinvestment so that all of humanity has trashed a precious metal to consume it to the point of oblivion. At some point, very soon, the physical market is going to take over and all the games that the bankers are playing will end. It will be game over and you will never see a more dramatic rise in price in anything, ever. Quadrillions of dollars, euros, pounds, rubles, yuan, etc. are all outstanding debt money to less than a billion above ground ounces of honest money, silver. When silver's value is reestablished, silver will once again be treated as a precious metal. Humanity will stop wasting it, and much higher prices will force wiser use and recycling of it. Silver will not become extinct, but its price will just go to the moon. This is truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There is no other example that even comes close to the stage that is set for the silver rocket launch. Silver has massive economic forces pushing it, including the declining dollar and increasing industrial demand. The entire 5,000 year production of the human race has all been but used up. And the entire world is for the very first time blinded by fiat digital money. If only one of these factors comes into full play, it would be enough to create generational wealth with silver. All these factors together tell me that the average American can, with very little effort, raise a king's ransom of silver. Think about the historical significance of an average American being able to own 1,000 ounces of silver, even 100 ounces of silver, especially when you value that silver as one-tenth of an ounce equals one day of hard human labor, or one-tenth of an ounce for every single human being on earth. This is truly a once-in-a-human history opportunity. All over the world we have seen color revolutions. These are the Western elite's funded revolutions in areas of the world they seek to dominate. There was the Orange Revolution in the Ukraine, the Rosa Revolution of Georgia, the Tulip Revolution of Kyrgyzstan, and now we're seeing uprising in the Middle East and the Jasmine Revolution in China. These revolutions all used a simple color to signify a feeling of real change. I propose that we start a silver revolution. The sole purpose is to strike at the root of the elite's power, which is their money system. The best part of this is that the system is going to collapse of its own cancerous excesses all by itself. All we have to do is be the silver straw on the elite's back. In the end, I believe that we need a monetary system that has competition. Gold and silver should circulate along with debt-free treasury notes or even local currency. Usury should be abolished. And those that use deceitful practice of forgery, which is known as fractional reserve banking, should be thrown into jail. It would end the era of gamblers and insiders and allow for an honest day's pay for an honest day's work.